body of Jesus, the physical body of Jesus, becomes very physical. But it's also interesting that no story of Jesus literally walking out of the tomb appears until about the third century. Now you get the implication that he's walked out of the tomb, but nobody actually tries to describe the moment when the tomb opened and Jesus walked out until you get, I think it's the Gospel of Peter in the third century, which is one of the apocryphal Gospels that didn't make it. But you get, you get a physical Jesus only in Luke and John. That's where Thomas wants to feel the nail prints. And, and that was important because what they wanted to be sure they could communicate was that the same Jesus they experienced in whatever resurrection was, was identified with the Jesus that they had known and as the person of history. Well, the, so Christianity the rests on the resurrection. It doesn't the gospels to start out in this Jewish world. But by the time the Gospels begin to be interpreted, they're interpreted in the Greek world. And the Greek world is dominated by the thought of the Neoplatonists who were dualistic. That is, they divided heaven from earth as if they were two separate realms. God from human life, divine from human, um, souls from bodies, spirits from flesh. They, it was, these were clearly two different realms. And it was in that frame of reference that, that the early Christian church uh, wrote its creeds and developed its doctrines and its dogmas. It's interesting to me that the earliest gospel, Mark, about 70, Mark portrays well, Jesus as fully human. Uh, tradition, so I understand it. 
and it was terribly important to me as a child. Uh, because in my life, I don't want to go in my biography, but my life was a pretty unstable life as a child. My father died when I was 12. He had been a pretty active alcoholic. My mother was not an educated all my my, I tell people that a horse could never explain what it means to be human. No matter what you did, no matter how a horse might be able to talk, a horse could never enter into the human experience and describe what it's like to be human. I wonder why we think human beings can describe what it's like to be God. And yet we've done that throughout history. We've said, God is this, and if you don't agree with this, I'll burn you at the stake, or I'll go to war, I'll persecute you. That's nothing except human arrogance. God is a mystery into which uh, Mukti could be defined in uh, various ways. The general definition which I give for Mukti is the liberation of senses. Now, when you see, you do not see without the interference of the mind. If you can see without the mind interfering, that is Mukti. If you can hear, without the mind interfering, that is mukti. The same applies to smell, touch and even thought. Thought also can be observed without you are getting involved with the thought. Now what's happening is when you are thinking, you think you are thinking. But it is actually possible to see thoughts flow as though they are, they are independent of you. This is a, a physical reality, actually you can see thoughts. Any kind of thought would be coming into you and would be going out of you and you can watch them. So, this is the state of mukti, that is the complete liberation of the senses from the control of the mind. It's only such a being who is actually living. Wherever the mind is in control, you are not living. When the mind is not there, then you are actually living. That's why when people ask me, what is the purpose of life, my answer is, if you are living, you won't ask, ask that question. The purpose of life is to live. What does that mean? To live the life of the senses. The senses must be independent and free of the mind. Now what's happening is, you are not at all experiencing reality. Reality to you is what is flowing through the senses. Now all the time you are interpreting whatever data is coming into you. You look at a tree and you say it's a big tree, small tree, green tree, mango tree, this, that. All the time comments are going on. When you sit down to eat food, you're not eating food. You start worrying about your office or your family or this or that or comment on the food itself. The food is not being experienced. That's why I've said in the Mahavakyas, if you experience reality as it is, then you will just experience bliss. You will see this whole creation is perfect. It's the most beautiful thing and that you're already in heaven. You have made it into a hell. when required. Otherwise, why should thought interfere? There's no need for thought to come and interfere with your actual experience. Now, when the senses become free of the control of thought or the mind, then we say you have discovered unconditional joy, the unconditional love. Such is this joy that you will feel that you are connected with everybody. So you discover true love. So this true love and this true joy are not separate things, they're all one and the same. And this is a natural occurrence. That is what you are designed to be. That is what a human being is supposed to experience all the time. Since you do not experience that, your lives have become miserable. And to escape that misery, you have created various escape routes through which all the time you are escaping from your misery. 
which misery itself is because you are not experiencing reality. So that is why people take to alcohol or to drugs or sex or whatever that is. Because otherwise what is there in your life, it becomes meaningless. So the whole attempt of this movement is to help you experience reality as it is. When that happens, you discover unconditional love and unconditional joy. You feel connected with everything and everybody. You do not feel you're a separate individual. You do not live for yourself alone anymore. Because the yourself has become everybody. You live for the sake of humanity. This is not a concept or some imagined thing. This is a day-to-day -day reality once you become enlightened or you become a mukta. And thousands of people have already got into this state. And even right now there are a few people sitting here in this state.